Back in the best Ohio has to offer. Before we begin, if you're new to this channel, please hit those like and subscribe buttons and that bell icon to officially join the Columbus crew. Through our last tours here at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, we have journeyed through four out of the ten spots here at the zoo. Which the spots we went to was Asia Quest, Heart of Africa, Congo Expedition, and our last tour, Australia and the Islands. Which we got to see the kangaroos, koalas, orangutans, and the Komodo dragons. But today, we're going to go through something that's somewhat brand new. Adventure Cove! This region here is somewhat new to the zoo because it opened in the summer of 2020, replacing the old Animal Encounters Village. Today, there are a few more stops to see animals around the world. And well, for those of you who have kids, it's also a real good place for those of you who like to do rides. But since this is an animal channel, we'll be sticking with the animal side of things. This is usually the first region that you usually stop by when you enter the zoo which is worth it because well there are really a lot of cool animals that well you have probably never seen so without further ado let's get a move on the new adventure cove region is located right next to the zoo marketplace just a few hundred feet away from the zoo's main entrance also a few hundred away from the zoo marketplace is our first stop one of three pools that was added here for adventure cove for two species of penny ped which, at first, I didn't spot anyone until I found this guy itching. But don't worry, we'll have a better view in a moment. But yes, the zoo is home to two species of pinniped, and I'll briefly tell you more about the species here at the zoo in a few moments. If we want to continue, we have to go down this path, which I highly recommend it because there is something cool at the end of this trail. Also along the way, you come across these large panels and a bubble Get our view of the penny pads, which again, in a few moments, I'll tell you which ones we have. As we look at this last glass panel, we head to one of our second stops, which again, is also highly recommended. It tells us about how the zoo is taking care of the penny pads here. And well, here's the first pool that we saw earlier. And again, nothing is view until, well, I caught these two right over here. But anyway, these animals are California sea lions one or two penny pads here at the zoo. When Adventure Cove opened, it was home to 10 sea lions, but now today, it's home to 13 because three pups were born here in the last year, two last summer, and one right at the same time when Frankie the elephant was born. And now the spot I highly recommend you seeing, the 360 degree underwater tunnel, which now you can see the seals and sea lions from left to right, but you can also see him above you and below you, as you can see in a moment. Now you see why it's worth it, because, well, usually I never see seals or sea lions swimming below me and above me, which has been one of the coolest things I ever seen in my life. As I mentioned, there are two species of pinniped here at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. Well, they weren't on display when the Britain Jacob opened, but now today, you find the zoo's four harbor seals. Which, they like to hang out around the second pool, which, I mean, really, I don't blame them. But, um, it's super really cool to see. Like, I managed to caught these two just playing around like seals like to do best. For those who remember, when I did the first Adventure Cove episode, the seals weren't out because, well, they were really shy when they first got here. But, as you can see now, they are really happy to be here. As we take a look at the seals and the sea lions swimming below me one last time, we have to move on, but don't worry, seals and sea lions are not done on the list just yet. There's still more to come. We have to move up just a little further away from the underwater tunnel, through the sliding doors once again, to our third stop, or fourth, really it doesn't matter. As you're heading back outside and passing the rocks, if you turn to your left, we have another glass viewing area, which you can see the underwater tunnel. This is usually another spot where the seals and sea lions usually hang out the most. But again, mostly the harbor seals, as you can see right here. As this one, well, was trying to interact with me. Which, I have never got this close up to a harbor seal before. So, that's another reason why you should stop by Adventure Cove when you visit the Columbus Zoo. 
As I mentioned, the zoo is currently now home to 13 sea lions and 4 harbor seals, which again, all of them have been doing very well over the last year. Especially the harbor seals since they were the last to be out because they were so shy. But now, as you can see, even this one was kind of sleeping in the water, they are all doing very well. As I mentioned, those were the first two pools out of the three that I wanted to show you. There's still one more pool, but as of right now, they're only open on weekends for Boo of the Zoo. And around times of 10, 12, 2, and 4, at the lighthouse, you'll find a sea lion show called Sea Lion Training Tales and Dive In Adventure. I've been wanting to do the Dive In Adventure show, but, well, I haven't had enough time to see them. But luckily, during the summer, I managed to caught the Sea Lion Training Tales, which, again, highly recommended because this is how it shows how trainers do well training the zoo sea lions, which is obviously very, very amazing and worth it. Even though it's only 30 minutes long, but I highly recommend that you see it. This shows you how the keepers get along with the sea lions and see how long and how hard it takes them to train the sea lions. And well, as you can see, it turns out to be very well. Absolutely amazing. Like I was, I even had my jaws dropped when I saw this and all the amazing things the keeper has done with the sea lions. Like I said, the Dive In Adventures tours and the Sea Lion show are on weekends only. Dive In Adventure at 12 and 2 p.m. and the Sea Lion Training Tales at 4 p.m. on weekends only throughout the rest of this month. So without further ado, let me show you a few more of the amazing clips of this amazing Sea Lion show and how well they worked hard on the training. That was very worth it, like really, even though I had to work on that day, but whatever, still made it. Anyway, we're now at part two of Adventure Cove, Jack Hanna's Animal Encounters Village, which is home to the zoo's ambassador animals. As far as I know, I have seen over 20 species of ambassador animals, which, well, I'll tell you the ones I've seen over the past year in a moment. The first one in this yard, well, as you always tell, is a northern ground hornbill. A ground version of Zazu from the Lion King. As far as I know, this one is very curious, like very curious of everything. 
and very active, like this next animal that I saw before I was filming Adventure Cove. This animal is my favorite of Adventure Cove. Anyway, this small cat is a serval. This small cat lives in the savannas of Sub-Saharan Africa, hunting for birds and mice. And thanks to this large ears, the serval can locate a mouse that's very hard to find in the grass. And the serval can jump over 10 feet into the air to snatch a bird and bring him down with them. Which I really wish I could have got that on film, but I don't. But still, I was lucky to catch the serval being active on this day. The other two large animals that rotates with the serval is Stevie, the silver fox. And, like I mentioned in Heart of Africa, Dave and Adrian, the world's first in vitro cheetah cubs. And for those of you who live in Columbus and watch my Adventure Cove episode from last year, you are correct. They did display cheetahs in this exhibit last year, but I have no idea why they stopped displaying them. As we head inside into the Encounters Village, we'll be able to find a few more of the Ambassador animals. As you can see, there are three exhibits to start off with. We'll be starting on the left in some kind of parkish exhibit. Which is really good because it really resembles a park. Anyway, sleeping on this day are two female rare cats that were introduced to the zoo about a few years ago. These are Jeff Voice cats. As far as I know, the last time I've seen a Jeff Voice cat other than Columbus was in Cincinnati Zoo's old cat house. And I have a privilege of seeing these two girls when they were only a few weeks old and they were really adorable. Also rotating with the cats is a red-legged Siriima. Now to the other side of that hallway, in some kind of, well, underwater theme, which it is, because, well, on this day was a domestic duck. Yes, I'm serious, a duck. But don't worry, the duck rotates with two other species. First up, the previously mentioned Asian small clawed otters. Like I mentioned in Australia and the islands, the Asian small clawed otter population here at the zoo was over seven, and some of them had to be animal ambassadors. So, why not put them in here? Which I thought that was a really good idea. And well, like all otters here at the zoo, and well, any other place that you see an otter, these two are very playful. Like, absolutely very playful. Which I also got the privilege of getting it on film. The other aquatic animal that also rotates with the ducks and otters is also one of my favorites, the African black-footed penguins. I didn't film them because, well, I haven't seen them in this exhibit for a while, so here's one from I got from Pittsburgh earlier this summer. The African black-footed penguin is one of 14 penguin species that doesn't live in the icy Antarctica. As it got its name, the African black-footed penguin lives in the coast of South Africa. But that doesn't mean they still live in a cold life because, well, in the waters of South Africa, the waters there can get pretty cold, surprisingly. But anyway, we have to move on, but birds are not done here in Adventure Cove. As we continue down the path, we get to the other exhibit, which, well, the animal at this exhibit was a little hard to spot, so moving on just a little further, but before I had to film this other creature, well, these two surprisingly walked in while I was filming. And don't worry, there was a keeper walking with them as well, so they did not escape. But anyway, this is the world's largest rodent, the capybara. The reason why these two are out of their exhibit and onto the main path for visitors walk is that they're, they're going to another exhibit that they're being transferred to, so that's why. And don't worry, like I mentioned, there was a keeper walking with them, as you can see right in front of the capybaras. And for those of you who like capybaras, stay tuned in a little bit, because we'll be running to these two again after I mentioned the rest of the animals inside the village. Anyways, back on track. We're back at that one exhibit that, well, I had to get a different view. Anyway, and here was a craven, a crow slash raven, which are both the same animals with different name. It was an imperfect view to the light, so I do apologize, and I try to get as close as I could. The craven also rotates with a few other birds and mammals, such as the white cockatoo, a new species here at the zoo. 
They also rotate with a prehensile tailed porcupine. And last but not least in this exhibit, blue and gold macaws. There are still at least a few more birds that I need to mention. But right next door where the craven was at is some kind of food truck exhibit. Anyway, sleeping on this day was a Virginia opossum. The other animals that rotate in here is a red-footed tortoise. And also one of my favorites in Adventure Cove, a Kikachu. Which can also be seen in the Dive In Adventure Show. Alright, now moving down just a little further is some kind of food stop area. Also sleeping on this day was so so something new that came here last year. Three sand cats. The first time I've seen the species here at the zoo was actually on Halloween of last year. And believe me, I was beyond excited. Because like the Jeff Voice cat, the last time I've seen a sand cat was at Cincinnati Zoo's cat house slash nine hunters. But anyway, right across from the sand cats, though it wasn't really in a, well, it was really hard to find the species in here. Anyway, this garden on this day was home to a short beaked echidna, which, well, I couldn't find it in film it, so anyway, it's also rotated with a swift fox, another species they've never seen before, also a large hairy armadillo. Also new to the zoo is an eastern screech owl, but the animal I managed to did see in this exhibit a few hours later was a southern three-banded armadillo, which was very active. Again, like the cats, the last time I've seen this species was in Cincinnati Zoo's Night Hunters. And well, I usually never seen this species quite active. And well, I thought this was really funny and really cool at the same time because I never seen a three-banded armadillo on the move this much going back and forth. And but yes, that did make me very dizzy. Even I'm dizzy right now. Right next door to the sand cats and right across from the echidnas and armadillos is another store, which on this day was striped skunks. As far as I know, the zoo is home to between four to five striped skunks, including I know one that has a really creative name for the species. One of the skunks in here is named Febreze. Yes, Febreze. Still, I like to mention them because, like the armadillo, I usually never seen the skunks being this active. But anyway, we had to head to our last exhibit inside of the Encounters Village. Inside, that is. We still got a few more outdoor exhibits to go. But anyway, this some kind of garden store is rotated by two species. The first one is a Garnet's Greater Gallico. But the species that was displayed here on this day was the popular red-fronted macaws. Who really liked to have all the attention from us, that is. This species also resembles the thick-billed parrot at Cincinnati Zoo's Wings of the World. But it's not. It has more feathers and a longer feather tail. But anyway, yes, the thick-billed parrot is another species of parrot. And, uh... It's absolutely adorable, and like I mentioned, loves all the attention from not just the staff, but from us as well. Now we're leaving the inside portion of the Encounters Village, and now, well, also next to one of the last buildings that we'll be featuring is another outdoor exhibit, as you can see right here. This is you between the previously mentioned Red River Hogs, which I haven't seen one in here for a while, but they also rotate with an Indian and African Crested Porcupines. Yes, we'll see the Indian Crested Porcupine in another episode. But then again, we're back to a previously mentioned species that was walking through that hallway. Yep, so these are the two capybaras that were walking around the path inside the village. Anyway, there are two males here at the zoo. And yes, they do have another exhibit which, well, we'll see its other really cool companion in a bit. We're moving on, but for a good reason, we're heading to our last featured building that I yet to encounter here at Adventure Cove. And well, like last year, I had to put it in two different episodes because the zoo was closing. But not this time. Anyway, welcome to Stingray Bay. A 16,000 gallon pool. Well, it's also home to stingrays. Once freed the members, but now free to everyone, mind that you wash your hands. But anyway, it's open almost all year. Well, it really opens when the zoo is open. 
in, well, not open when it closes, but anyway, you can come in here and gently pet dozens of stingrays, like a lot of stingrays, which they had to be put in the manatee building during the uh, renovation for Adventure Cove. But anyway, it's home to cow nose rays and also the popular southern stingrays, two popular species of stingrays in the zoos. Like the parrots back in the Encounters Village, the stingrays here too also like to get the attention, like a lot. And well, when I was there, a lot of them liked to come up to me and as you can see, they all want to give me a high five and well, the main reason why I'm in here, gently petting them, which well, that's obviously a very cute thing to do here at the zoo. When I mention high five, here's another interesting story. So, when I was over here last year for Christmas, along with my friends, I was petting one of the stingrays that you can see in one of the, uh, well, the uh, Christmas montage from last year. One of the stingrays came up to me and actually gave me a high five, which, well, I thought that was one of the coolest scenes I ever seen an animal do. But yes, this is a really cool stop and just, well, not only pet stingrays, but also them trying to pet you and give you a really cool high five. And it's no wonder why a whole lot of people would like to come in here, not just to pet the stingrays, but also see other people watch them pet the stingrays, which is always a very funny reaction because a lot of people have probably have never pet a stingray before. And you can also feed them that only costs about $3. Though the Steamray portion of Adventure Cove is about to come to an end, first, well, one last look at the rays, and, well, as much as I can pet them, we had to move on. And I had to wash my hands as well. Now to finish up the lasting parts of Adventure Cove. Which, the next part, I was very lucky to get, and you'll see why. As I was walking, I managed to spot something that was kind of on the move, and, well, You'll be seeing why I was very lucky to catch in, in just a moment. By the way, yeah, there's more footage of what this thing is in a moment. By the way, continuing down the path from Stingray Bay and the Encounters Village, you get one side of the part of the Capybara exhibit. Well, that's also, well, kind of being cleaned off. But anyway, meet Sid. Yes, Sid. Sid here is a Lynn's two-toed sloth. This isn't the first time me seeing a sloth moving and being pretty active, but the first time ever recorded seeing a sloth moving and being active, so I got very lucky of capturing this on camera. Like, a lot, because I usually never seen the sloth moving, ever. The zoo is home to two sloths, Wilson, which is another male, and like I mentioned, this one is Sid. Which is funny and amazing at the same time, because, well, they're honoring the sloth from the Ice Age movies. And as much as I like to talk about more about the sloths here at the zoo, we unfortunately have to move on. But don't worry, we'll be able to see Sid one more time in the other side of the village. We have to move just a little, but not too far, to another pack right across from the capybara slash sloth yard. But anyway, this is what I like to call it the tortoise gardens, which is home to a few species of tortoise. One of them, the African Spur Tortoise, which were displayed in the heart of Africa, the Gopher Tortoise, which burrows underground where prairie dogs live, and also contains a radiated tortoise from the Congo region, like I mentioned. And on this day, this Gopher Tortoise is actually walking in the right direction, because in, right in front of him is a Leopard Tortoise in the bush that's, well, hiding. But anyway, I'm assuming it'll be a walk through display exhibit, but I'm not so sure. But anyway, it's still a cool place to have tortoises and see them. Anyway, we're now heading back to the Encounters Village to touch up in the last exhibits I have not touched up yet. But here we're kind of going back where we were just at before the tortoises. On our left is the previously mentioned Capybara slash Sloth Yard, which again is being cleaned up and the Capybaras had to be moved. And, well, here's another viewing of Sid, well, getting comfortable in his nest box and also moving around and eating at the same time, which is another cool reason why I was so excited to film the sloths. 
But anyway, back to our last few exhibits we have not touched yet. This little garden area slash, well, shed on this day were a few toko toucans, which is another species of bird here at Adventure Cove. But the toucan has a bill that's almost as long as their body. And another cool animal to have here in Adventure Cove. As well as the next animals we're about to see right next door to the toucans. And well, somewhat in a similar exhibit, some kind of like patio area with trees and a bench. Anyway, in this exhibit, I've seen a laughing kookaburra. Yes, I made sure. This exhibit, I also seen King Julian, the zoo's green tailed lemur, which I have not seen for a while. But speaking of lemurs, I did see the more endangered red rough lemur. For those of you who do not know, even though lemurs resemble a monkey, which they are technically a type of primate, they are a different kind of primate. They are prosimians, meaning a more primitive group of primate, which includes lorises and podos. When I learned about this not too long ago, I was pretty shocked. But anyway, lemurs are still really cool primates, even though I almost call them monkeys. But really, that doesn't matter. Mostly in this yard, you'll find two red rough lemurs playing around or sleeping. And well, as you can see, they found an interesting way to entertain us. Even though King Julian is a rain tail lemur, and well, obviously, rain tail lemurs are very popular in zoos, red rough lemurs do have to be honored by somehow, even though they're the one of the most endangered of all the lemurs. So, really, they had to be honored somehow. And well, they are absolutely adorable. And again, find other ways to entertain us. Even though I don't have the footage of it, I actually did see one of the red rough lemurs doing somersaults at the top of the cage, which, well, I was very shocked to see and, well, very interesting to see. So that's one another cool reason to stop by in this region. Heading to one of our last stops here at Adventure Cove, but while I was walking, I just had to view one more time of the red rough lemurs. Which, well, this one was a little closer this time, so I had to record it as much as possible. But anyway, we are now at our last exhibit. It's disguised as some kind of front porch. But anyway, sleeping on this porch on this day were two bad-eared foxes. Which is another cool species the zoo displays. Unlike the red fox, well, sometimes, the bad-eared fox is insectivores, meaning they like to eat insects like aardvarks but on a really hot afternoon like this was well you probably already know what the foxes will be doing even though they were trying to be a little active but it, i mean it really doesn't matter i mean i like to sleep too so it doesn't matter that's all the exhibits here in the animal encounters village but we had to go back just a little more and well i wanted to get a little closer up view of the ground hornbill that we saw earlier and well obviously as i mentioned this one is very very curious which i mean that's fine by me because i never got close to a hornbill anyway if you come here at adventure cove later in the day you might see one of the keepers holding a colombian red-tailed boa the last animal I yet to mention here in adventure cove and you might see this well balloonish thing with jack cannon holding a baby clouded leopard but for some of you wait a minute that's not the end you are correct because, well, I forgot to mention that, well, there's still one more stop, I promise. Well, for another previously mentioned species that we saw dozens of times at the beginning of this episode, as we go above this ramp, we head to an observation deck and upper viewing of two of the seal and sea lion pools that, well, we went through at the beginning of this episode, as you can see right here. Which is pretty nice because, well, as we head to the pool on the left, which is one of the first two pools, you can see the above viewing of the underwater tunnel. And up here, it seems that one of the sea lions wanted to have a break from the water. Well, I mean, I don't blame her. I get a little tired of being swimming in water all day, so I don't blame her. Anyway, there's another sea lion encounter that I forgot to mention earlier. It was on my birthday of this year, so roughly about seven months ago and well really when we got there we saw the sea lions jumping out of the water as you can see right here which well me and my friends have never seen before here in adventure cove 
which well i thought wow that's one way to celebrate a birthday trip here at the zoo and believe me yes that was a really cool trip absolutely <laughs> so if you want to start your tour here at the columbus zoo i highly recommend you step by adventure cove and see not only playful sea lions but also see ambassador animals that rotates every day and well playful stingrays that well really love to have some attention but anyway we're not done yet we gotta go back to the other side of the viewing area the uh, observation deck to the first sea lion pool which well i didn't really see anyone until a little pop-up for a split second then went back down and that little pop-up was our last animal in the venture cove for this day now for those of you who wondered while we're heading to the exit that well what's my favorite regions of the zoo by order well asia goes for first heart of africa for second Australia for third, and Adventure Cove goes for fourth. But anyway, Adventure Cove is really a good start for the zoo, especially seeing some really cool animals. As we're heading back to the front in the entry village, we get a few more viewings of the sea lions. And well, here's our last official stop right next to the Globe Fountain. Adventure Cove, the Columbus Zoo's newest region, is obviously a must-see stop. Not only seeing playful seals and sea lions, but also see some pretty cool ambassador animals, animals that we've probably never seen before, as well as a good ending with, well, petting, seeing rays, and giving us a very good high five. And that completes our tour of the Columbus Zoo's brand new Adventure Cove. The next time we'll be at this amazing place, well, We'll be in somewhat of a similar situation where the seals and sea lions will be at. We'll be going underwater, not only through the Great Barrier Reef, but also the uh, swamps and wetlands of the Caribbean and Florida, Peru, and the Aldabra Islands of the shores. But anyway, like and subscribe, and hit that bell icon to join our Columbus crew. Bye, everyone. Have a nice day.